with me to Mark chapter 9 verse 9 Can I ask uh, Daniel if you would come and read that from the screen for me please Mark chapter 9 verse 9 Can you get it on the screen We are going to sing a rap after this, you are not forgotten, so rappers be ready. <laughs> As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Thank you. As they were coming down, thank you Daniel. As they were coming down from mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from dead. Okay, now I'll continue the message, but before that our rappers are going to come and sing a rap for the glory of God. Can you come to the screen, please? Come. I'm going to step down from here. Rappers, how many of you like rapping, yeah? Shall we give a clap to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Love? Welcome, guys. Just the right song. No, song three star. Right. <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, we got, got the bars, got the flow, got the vibe, yeah. We got, got the vibe, yeah. yeah. Here to prescribe a smile, yeah. So, so listen up, just for a while, yeah. Our God is awesome. Sent down his one son. So now he's loved one. So to the king we sing, son. Our God is bright like the sun. Death is defeated, he's already won. He's on top, challenge is none. Here in his presence, we sing and have fun. He's the one, no one compares. The most loving, no one compares. Turn to him in a trial. Turn to him and you'll smile. Like, let's stay positive. Feeling down, wanna frown. Nah, nah, turn it upside down. As a good guy, let's smile. Get together in a frown. Hey, never let nobody. Down, hey, SCF the dream team, hey, the loving constantly stream, hey, 
free of charge. That's how we do it. Good vibes all over. That's how we do it. Share a hug through a trial. Hey, get together. Let's just smile. Hey, smile on my face when I see His grace. Can't wait till we meet again on that day. We should carry on believing in our strong faith. Jesus died on the cross and He paved the way. End of the pan. The wrath from God's wrath. Bright like the sun, death is defeated, he's already won. He's on top, challenge is none. Here in his presence, we sing and have fun. One, challenge is none, death is defeated, he's already won. Give it to a trial, hey, and together, let's just smile. Feel weak, let's stay positive. Feeling down, wanna frown. Nah, nah, turn it upside down. Get Have together. a good time, let's, let's just smile. smile Get together, let's not frown Ay. Never let nobody down Ay. It's FCS, the dream team Ay. The Lord we constantly stream Free of charge, that's how we do it Good vibes all over, that's how we do it Get to the trial Ay. Get together, let's just smile Bad week. week, let's stay positive. Feeling down, wanna frown. Nah, nah, turn it upside down. Have a good time, let's just smile. Get together, let's not frown. Ay, never let nobody down. Ay, FCS, the dream team. The love we constantly stream. Ay, free of charge, that's how we do it. Good vibes all over, that's how we do it. Share a hug through a trial. Hey, get together, let's just smile. And that's it for the first rap. And then we've got another rap coming up. So, rap two. What up? We got one more. He sees you every day, no matter what you do He loves you in ways, he loves his dreams, forgives our sins Second chance why Jesus died, so now we dance with praise and worship his holy name For Jesus came, death put the shame, you overcame Just the pain, he took the pain Jesus, nice guy, best friend that he doesn't stand by Connect to him, life's wi fi the watch all your problems whiz by So with him, be eagle's wings, his goodness falls down like a spring His love he constantly brings, worth more than all you can bling For his goodness, forever sing, open up your heart, invite him in Whenever you need help, he's always there, he's got your number, so ring ring Jesus, nice guy, best friend that he doesn't stand by Connect to him, life's wi fi the watch all your problems whiz by He sees you every day. He sees you every day, no matter what you do. He loves you in ways, he loves his truth, forgives our sins. Second chance, that's why Jesus died. So now we dance, we praise and worship his holy name. For Jesus came, death put to shame, yet we overcame. Just for us, he took the pain. Jesus, my friend, his love lasts to the end. He's fresh, like a new trend. No holiday on the weekend. Sins, sins. <laughs> To make a way, best friend, best friend doesn't stand by. Connect to him, lies by fire. Don't watch all your problems, which by Jesus, my friend. His love lasts to the end. He's rest like a new trend. No holiday on the weekend. He sees you every day, no matter what you do, he loves you in a way, he loves his truth, he gives our sins. Second chance, that's why Jesus died, so now we dance and praise and worship his holy name. But Jesus came, that put to shame, yeah, he overcame, just for us, he took the pain.
Jesus, my friend, flu, I see the end, it's French, I do a pen, no play that way. You see it every day, you know what you do, you love me anyway, you've lost it, you forgive our sins, second chance, that's why Jesus died, so now we dance, we'll praise and worship his holy name, but Jesus came, that put to shame, here he overcame, just for us, he took the pain. Do you know what you in the way? He's lost the trees, but gives our sins. And second chance, that's why Jesus died. So now we dance, we praise and worship His holy name. But Jesus came, that put to shame. Here he overcame. Just for us, He took the pain. Thank you, guys. It's good. Sorry about the technical arrangements. <laughs> But God is good. He's risen. You know, we, we are people of his pasture and wonderful to bring. Glory to God, the risen Savior. And uh, God would do amazing things. Thank you for your faithfulness about the singing. You know, we can sing with, or with music, without music. We can rap throughout the day and giving glory to God. <laughs> it's all good. Mark, just go back to Mark chapter 9, verse 9. It's about resurrection. The rap song is about resurrection, which they have built. Um, this is what Daniel read to us. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. See, when you talk about sort of... Uh, uh, Easter message, you'll come and read oh, Martha, Mary, and all the people went to the grave and got up from the place. But you need to understand from the heaven's perception. Shall we bow our heads down and ask a heaven's perception to come into our hearts in our life? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We lift up our hearts, we lift up our hands, we lift up our soul to the throne room of heaven. And as Christians, Father God, help us to see what the heaven is saying to us today. Personally, for me and my family, and for my children and my calling and purpose in your life, and what you are saying about the things around me, my neighbor, my workplace, what I do, what is the heaven's perception. So we live in the place with you, that we live with you, Father God. Jesus, the very reason you came from heaven to earth is not just to die on the cross only, but open up our eyes to see so we see the heaven's perception on this earth and we live a life according to heaven's calling in our life and complete the journey. And we come to you and you would say, well done. Well done to every one of us. So help us this morning our life to be equipped with your word. Our eyes be opened our heart be opened so that we can see heaven's perception for our life so we can build our life bringing glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, God's people shouted amen. You know, I'm reading this verse to you, 9-9. Nine, nine. The Bible, the Bible is something you need to understand. A Christian living is to understand that is what is the heaven's perception for our life. So we don't, we move with the time in the Bible. We don't get stuck in one place. Jesus came there and he was showing the past and the future at this word. He has not died. He is living. His father is dead. His mother is alive. You know, many people do not know how Jesus' father died. Because Jesus, died, Jesus' father died, Joseph died before Jesus came to ministry. Because when you look at the Bible, the first miracle Jesus did at the, at the, at the wedding at Canaan, Mary was there, but not Joseph. Joseph died long time ago. Joseph didn't rise from the dead. Shall we shout hallelujah? He gone to be with the Lord in heaven. Mary is alive, Joseph is dead. Jesus' ministry began, so when I calculate, when I look at the time span, what happened? Jesus' father, Joseph, was an honorable man, and he was looking for Jesus. When Mary came looking for Jesus, when he was in the temple, and they taken, 
He's literally, Joseph was an honorable man. He took Jesus all the time for the Passover and so many things in the temple. And one day they were looking for, Mary was very upset. Do you not know Jesus, your father and me were looking for you where you were? How many of you read that passage? But Jesus said, I was in my father's house. If I give you references, you'll be going all over the place. I, don't, I want to get focused on, so we have heaven's perception in our life. See, nothing in the four gospel is written how Jesus' father died. Is that true? Nothing in the gospel. All the four gospel you go through with that one, how Joseph died, there is nothing. When Jesus came to the ministry when he was 32... I believe. Joseph was no more there. Jesus could have risen Joseph from the death. He risen Lazarus from the death. But Jesus seen him. See, Joseph was life completely was a sacrifice. It's not nice for him to be a third wheel on the marriage in the sense of Jesus was surrog you know he was a surrogate father shall we shout hallelujah but you know God is speaking God spoken to Mary this is what is going to happen you will become pregnant you will bring forth a child and his name will be Jesus the same God is speaking to Joseph. Do not abandon your wife. Do not stone her to death. Because the law says at the time, the Jewish law says at the time, she should be stoned to death. She's a girl who became pregnant outside the marriage. Religious people, you have to have heaven's perception to see the things of God. So we can fulfill the purpose and plan of God in our life. The religion taken a stone. If they know she was pregnant. And Jesus has got no life. Religion will kill Jesus. If the mother is killed. The baby is also killed. This morning I want to say. If you have a religious thought in your life. Religious to build the kingdom of God is no way. But if you look at heaven. If you look at heaven's perception in your life, you know who you are. You know God, how he is connecting with the people, how he is building his kingdom, what role I should play. As a Christian, I need to have heaven's perception, not my head knowledge, not my understanding of some books written by somebody. Good to read those books, but unless the Holy Spirit is ruling in your heart, you are not going to get the heaven's perception. You will get the perception of those writers. Highlights of books. I don't criticize books. It's good to read the books. Even I've been prophesied that I will write a book when God tells me when is the time. But Jesus was well focused on. All the time, heaven's perception on his forehead. Jesus' father died. When he was a baby, the father must have trained him very well. He became a carpenter. He knew how to make the how to make the cabinets, how to make the furnitures. He made perfectly everything. Father trained him. Trained him so that he's not begging somewhere. He's not taking a begging bowl to borrow money. And he was really trained him very well. I don't want to talk about my life. It's very, very important you train your children in the things of God. Because you see the heaven's perception, Jesus, Father Joseph, trained Jesus very well in the trade. Jesus must have got better. Jesus must have grown. But Jesus didn't have an opportunity to raise up his father, dead father from life. But I wanted to tell you, Jesus' father must have died a dignified death. Because you know why? At the age of 12 itself, Jesus had a heaven's perception. He's telling his mom, I was in my father's house. 
today. Folks, you may be telling, I'm in Pastor Sam's church, or in Found with Christian Fellowship. If I do not know in your heart, you are in your father's house, you are in the wrong place. Many people say this to me, I try to help them. Pastor Sam's church is so beautiful. The building may be beautiful, the building will never come with you. But if you are in the father's house, mother is saying, father and mother, we were searching for you. But Jesus would say, I was in my father's house. Mary had only the perception of this earth. The perception of this earth. But Jesus had the perception of heaven. See, today in the living kingdom of God, in your life, and I see many, many people, many, many people's life, never they have no glimpse of heaven's, heaven's perception in their life. When you have a heaven's perception, these are all not worth it. That's what you will come to. You know, so many things, when Jesus said, you know, I was in my father's house. You know, man cannot build a, a church, a building for God. Man cannot build it, because you know why? Unless he's living in, I was in my father's house. The father's house is, when Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto you. I put the communion last week on the stage here. Just to, just to bit of a tell you, I didn't want to go into the detail of telling you everything there. I put the communion here instead of there. Why did we put here, and I ask you to come to the place, when Jesus is lifted up on the cross of Calvary, religion tells you differently, we must praise and worship God and lift him up, lift him up. Religion told you that one. You can dance and worship God, you can roll on, that's a different story. But don't try to lift Jesus up. It's too much for you. You can't do that one. Because already Father God has lifted him up high. What the Bible says is, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men and women unto me. When Jesus was lifted up, you have to understand the Bible. When Moses, everybody was bitten by the, bitten by the snake. Because... Jewish people were very rebellious. Israeli very, very religious. So as the church today, there are rebellious people everywhere. So as Israel, our four brothers were rebellious, and the church also very often rebellious. What happened as Hudson was teaching this morning, the snake was biting everybody. Poisonous snake was biting everybody. The church, the Bible is a wonderful book, Old Testament and New Testament. When we read together, you have the power. Shall we shout hallelujah? See, they are all Jewish people. Why the snake will bite them? God doesn't care. Unless we live in the Father's house every day. You know, your life is useless, no matter who you are. Now all the Israel people are dying because the snake bite. Snake is biting every one of them, dying and dying. Then Moses is crying out, what shall I do? He said, lift up the pole with the snake. Those who look upon the snake, oh, what is it? If Pastor Sam put a snake here and lifted it up, Pastor Sam has gone wrong, he's preaching heresy. <laughs> Those who looked, am I, am I speaking right thing, what is written in the Bible? <laughs> Those who looked upon the snake were healed. I think, I think, I think if, I, if, I, if I remember, some medical association, whether it is British or Indian, I don't know, still there is a sign symbol. What is it, Dr. Daniel? Indian or English? Indian, is it? Is that amazing? Is that amazing? The sign of the medical association is, I'm not very good in these things, I go with the spirit of God. The association's uh, symbol is, a snake lifted on, the, on that pole. Many Indians may not know what is the secret of it even either. The secret is this. Because Indian hospital, I used to go and preach the gospel and pray for the people we can't do here. When I am lifted up on that pole, I will draw many people unto me. When Jesus was lifted up, I put it as a symbol. You know, it's not that I am going to crucify Jesus again. We put the communion here. I set up for everybody come to the stage and take your communion. Because you know why? 
No pastor can carry anybody. If they climb, I can help you, I can teach you, I can, I can pray for you, I can do whatever I wanted to do, encourage you in everything there. At the end of the day, you have to climb to the place. You have to climb to the Father's house. You can't say, even Moses had a sister. Sister was Miriam. Miriam, what she thought, I carried the Moses, he should have drowned on the river Nile, I walked along the banks of the river until Moses reached a safe place, then I offered to be a mother, then I offered to be a nanny, I brought my, brought my mother and looked after Moses. Moses is moving with authority and power. Miriam thought, God only work with Moses, he will work with me also, he thought. Leprosy came upon her. Church, I wanted to tell you, God will not spare. God of Israel, you need to know God of Israel. Don't fool yourself. No matter who you are, leprosy came upon Miriam completely. Bring her. See, you can't rebel against God. When you see the heaven's perception, when I was 17, when I seen the heaven's perception, the world was not worth anything there. In the midst of the so many struggles and everything there, God, no matter what demands, I will do what the heaven's perception is in my life. My perception is totally different. God unfolded so many perception of heaven. That is the only call I bow down to you. Bow down to, I don't bow down to any other call whatsoever because I know the God of Israel, how he operates. Church, don't be fooled. I seen, you know, many, many years ago, one prophet, mighty prophet, I won't go into the detail of this prophet. And I have not preached this before because I know heaven's perception. Those people who walked in the places, they know the perception. I was there in the meeting, few people there in the room, and that prophet asked one question to the, to the, to the, without going into the detail, because he said to the, to the situation there, do you love your wife? And immediately a man from that meeting stood up and walked out of the house. Because you know why? That prophet could see the heaven's perception. You could see only who is in front of you. Who is in front of you? These are the people. You know, the same prophet went to Clay one day, prophet Clay one day, and he said, you say, you say thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, but I have not spoken anything. Understanding? I'm hearing from this man of God, the people of God, who have seen the perception of heaven. Great people God put in the path. But when we have a perception, I don't see it. He's Stanley sitting in front of me. I see the full potential in him. When he allowed God to work in his life, you are coming into the stature, into the alignment and the purpose of God. Many people will be healed through your life and your purpose and your children and family. Miracle, no matter what the MRI scan says, God will heal. God is a healer, he is a restorer. When you get heaven's perception, my heart is to see that you have the heaven's perception about everything that when you have a heaven's perception, you come in alignment with the Father's house. When you come in alignment with the Father's house, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to you. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem until... He didn't say, read the word very carefully, until I fill you with the Holy Spirit, until I clothe you with the Holy Spirit. I read the Bible. I read the Bible differently, folks, I tell you. Because until the Holy Spirit clothes you, you are a naked person. Wait in Jerusalem until I clothe you. I love the clothing. In a wonderful kurta, the Indian kurta. I'm not saying you are naked, but what I'm saying is wonderful. <laughs> and I say, the Holy Spirit, he's not filling you. Often we people think, God, I wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We all teach those things. But the Holy Spirit clothed you. Clothe you. I, as soon as he seen Brother Samuel, he clothed himself. Not with the Holy Spirit, but uh, he would. But what I'm saying is a nice kurda. God wanted to, people say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, yes, he filled, but he clothed you in the heaven's perception. You are clothed, you are robed, you are clothed. Until then, you are naked. 
Why would God, Adam, Adam and you were naked in the Garden of Eden? Hello. It's not a sex story there. God sees the perception of God is different. You look at somebody, oh, we religiously speak about that person. We preach judgment on the person we can touch never found worth. Until you have the perception of heaven. When you have the perception of heaven, your eyes open. That's why the songwriter wrote this song. Wretched and blind I come. Clothe me in white, so I won't be shamed. Lord, light the fire again. Lord, light the fire again. Yeah, I'm here to buy gold, refining the fire. Naked and poor, wretched and blind, I come. Clothe me in white. So I won't be shame. Lord, light the fire again. Holy Spirit, clothe you. Pastor Sam, love dressing, putting on a coat and everything there. That is only for the earthly realm. That is only for the earthly realm. I don't mind what I wear. That is the earthly realm. But there is something this morning I wanted to tell you. Jesus said to the disciple, Jesus risen from the dead and he meeting one person to another person and the ladies came first, they went to send the apostles, apostles didn't believe this called apostles this, this the ladies came with all the excitement but they went to the apostles apostles are called and chosen I'm not knocking any apostles they said we have seen Jesus risen what? Jesus risen? Jesus risen? What? They must be thinking. Anyway, apostles didn't believe until they seen Jesus. They saw Jesus. What I would like to tell you, and Jesus told them, go to Jerusalem, wait until you are clothed with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit clothe you. Until then, you are naked. Don't try with anything because you don't see the perception of heaven. And you don't see when I'm naked and poor, wretched and blind. When you come to God, God fill me, God clothe me, clothe me in white so I will be rich. When God is writing, when John is writing to the, all the churches, the seven churches, you are naked and poor, wretched and blind, but you think you are somebody. Repent. When, when Jesus, you see, we have to be very careful. Israel, what they did, when Jesus came as the baby, and Jesus came as the messenger of God, messenger, as well as the savior, as well as the Messiah, they were stuck in the past. Human tendency is to stuck in the past. You could have bought all the Easter egg and Easter donkey, Easter whatever. You can buy the egg and you can have a egg hunt. <coughs> You can have a rabbit hunt. You can have all the cards and everything. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you, Jesus is in none of them. Jesus is in none of them. He risen 2,000 years ago. But he's here there with the Holy Spirit to clothe you and me. Why the Anglican churches, why the many, many wonderful churches closed down? Why the wonderful churches have closed down? Why? Because when you refuse to clothe yourself with the Holy Spirit, you are naked. You are naked before the enemy. You may be thinking, devil may be telling you, your dress is good, your tie is good, you see, that is good, this is good, your shoe is polished. It's nothing before God. The perception of heaven changes everything there. You can dress wonderfully well. You see, don't, don't try to be, you know, change your dress and try to be something else. No, it doesn't work. Last week I shared gospel with two people. Very, very simple, you see. As they are buying some few wood from a shop, here is a man trying to help me. And he knew I'm a pastor. And he started conversation, he's a Catholic. 
I said him, wonderful, do you know Pastor, do you know Priest John? And I just built a conversation with him. And I said, uh, he was asking me, do you do the wake? No, I'm wake every day. I'm often wake, woken up at four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning to pray. I kneel, what? God wakes me up, so I don't have to have a wake like that, but God wakes me up to pray and intercede, so I wake up and intercede for whoever God tells me. God say, pray for Joanna. I cry out to God to Joanna. A Joanna may be okay, so I'm praying for somebody, maybe her husband I will pray for. Maybe God will say, pray for Muriel, and I pray for Muriel. God would say, I don't know why, but God would say, pray for Michael. I said, God, Michael doesn't come for anything. Michael play football. Pray for him. Pray for him. My human perception is, he's that, he's this, he, but the heavenly perception is, pray for Michael. This morning I want to say, risen Savior, what he would say? Wait in Jerusalem until I clothe you. Until I clothe you. You know, you can dress nicely, you can dress whatever the form you wanted. But when you, when the Holy Spirit clothes you, you are a different person. Your life changes and you are able to have heaven's perception. You can have anything. You can be a scientist, you can be a rocket scientist, you can be a doctor, you can be, you can be a lawyer, you can be an accountant. But I tell you, if you don't have heaven's perception in your life, you will understand nothing about this word of God. You will understand everything from the human perception. Are they fools? They close down the churches. Yesterday I was there with somebody. We are closing down that churches. That goes into auction. And some other religious people wanted to buy it, but they wouldn't sell it. Now they converted that into, a, into something, some sort of a cultural center. Oh, brother was telling me. Brother was telling me. My brother at the far end was telling me. Why? Why? Because the so-called leaders have to fail to see heaven's perception. Christian calling and purpose is to see. My job is to train yourself to see you're clothed with the Holy Spirit so you can see heaven's perception in your life. You can see heaven's perception for your children. You can see heaven's perception for your marriage. You can see heaven's perception for everything in your life. It's a big learning things. But when you don't, you know, sometimes we all make mistakes. When you make mistakes, again we come to the throne room of God. God, I don't want to remember the past, but you can. You can change my life. See, God given, Jesus was giving his disciples. Why I ask you to read Mark chapter 9, 9, I tell you. God wanted to show the perception of heaven. What is to do with Elijah to Jesus' time? Elijah died many years ago. How many of you know how many years ago he died? Any well scholars here? Okay. Elisha died long ago. That is the truth. Before Jesus came to ministry, Elisha died. Moses died long ago. But who is appearing on this chapter 9-9? Nine, nine? Good number, 9-9. Nine, nine. Moses, Elisha, and Jesus. This is called Mount Transfiguration. Jesus showing the perception of heaven. This is, the presence, present, this is the perception of heaven. I am standing in this place. Jesus, ordinary, ordinary carpenter's son, came as a carpenter's son. His father died. He didn't rise up from the dead. And he, he, paid his, he paid all the things he wanted to do. He looked after his children properly. And he must have died of natural courses in the time. That's why there is no highlight there. That is my understanding and scholars' understanding also. When Jesus' father Joseph died, he... Died, must have died of old age. So that is not a normal, that is not an extraordinary thing. Okay, let him go on to be with the heavenly father. He must have allowed him to go. Jesus came to ministry, the first ministry when he came, turned the water into wine. Mary was only there. I'm repeating what I said earlier. Jesus haven't got a father now. But he has got a heavenly father. The perception of heaven is opened up. In the ministry, he wanted to bring in the people bring in his loved ones, John and, and Peter, and try to show him the perception of heaven. But then he quickly shut the mouth of them to tell them, don't tell anyone. Charlie shout hallelujah. <laughs> on an on a Easter morning, I wanted to tell you a message here. 
what Jesus' perception of heaven. I'm teaching some deep substance to you. Some of you might find because some of you find it exciting. But I wanted you to be clothed, not filled, clothed with the Holy Spirit so you are not naked. Because that's what, you see, God created man, human being differently. Adam and Eve find and finally they found they were naked and trying to sort of make clothing for themselves. When the, Jesus died and he given a clothing to you and me, to all those who believe around the world, he given a clothing to them, all of them. When you're clothed with that Holy Spirit, what happened? You have the power. Now Jesus, see, the, it's wonderful about God is Joseph is bringing up his son Jesus and he taken to the temple regularly, made all the sacrifices, everything there. Before that, what happened? Mary is, the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary and told Mary, this is what you do. See here, here Sarah is there. I take her a nice photograph. They looks nice. Come and tell Sarah. God, God comes and tells something to Sarah. And the same God's nature, go to, go to her husband. Hello, husband, wake up. And no, no, you don't get up from there. Wake up. He say the same thing to him. You need to understand heaven's perception. See, if God is speaking something to Daniel, he will go to Hepzibah and tell in one form or other the same thing. Because you have a heaven's perception, you have a heaven's perception. If you don't have, you will have conflict. You don't, because you have a successful marriage, you've gone through many, many challenges, every one of them, because God confirms. I've seen over the years how much Daniel has grown in the kingdom of God. How much you have matured in the kingdom of God. Because you know why? God never tells one thing to you and one thing to you. In the morning, Mary woken up with a dream. The angel of the Lord came to me and spoken to me this. Okay, Joseph's initial instinct only, because he's supposed to stone his wife to death as well. That is a culture. He must have picked up a stone. But suddenly, the Holy Spirit come, wake up Stanley. Wake up Stanley. Oh Stanley, wake up, because he's always want to have the heaven's perception. He's ready to wake up. What God you are saying? Your fiance is pregnant. Have you got any other better news? <laughs> because he had heaven's perception, he will say, thy will be done. Where is the obedience come from the husband? Where does the obedience come from the husband? The same heaven's perception in you, you hear from the same voice, and you hear from the same voice. This is called marriage. Marriage is not something where wife is doing something. I am put up with the nonsense. You are dancing clown. You are a clown. On the New Year's Day, on the, on the Easter Sunday, I'm preaching something which you need to know. I declare something. A woman crying about her mother or husband. I stand with them. I see the heaven's perception. So healing come to people. Healing is nothing to do with uh, Pastor Sam's greatest gift, nothing. Because I see heaven's perception. If it is, if it is your life, uh, you know, no matter what you do, religion try to organize you. But I see heaven's perception. This is for charity and your children. I decree the heaven's perception. You got it. Cardi. God doesn't say something else to your wife. God doesn't say something else to you when we are properly focused on God. You know, I wanted to have your perception, oh God. The minute you say, your mother will be healed, your mother is healed. Today, you know, full of clowns in the church life. Full of clowns. And they wanted the husband to run around and jump around like a clown. You can never see, you have never heard a heaven's perception. You never seen the snake lifted up on the thing. You never seen Jesus lifted on the cross of Calvary. When he lifted on the cross of Calvary, well, we must raise up Jesus. We must have a, something, all the music and all the worship to pray. Lift up Jesus up. Pentecostal religion, I want to tell you, he's already lifted up to the highest place when he said he's finished. He's seated on the, on the throne in his mercy seat. 
religious people work with God, work with thinking they are doing, they're managing God and have some sort of a perception. But they never understood what is the heaven's perception. Heaven's perception this morning is, is morning for you to be clothed, to be clothed. God spoken to Joseph, don't abandon your wife. Don't abandon your wife. Don't allow her to be stoned. Bring her up. Carefully, Joseph. Joseph didn't rise up from the dead, but Joseph brought the children. Joseph, you know, Joseph had other children also. You maybe know it is only Jesus who only heard others. <laughs> he heard others. And they're all really brought up in the things and purpose of plan and God. Now, Jesus said, I'm in my father's house. My father and you are looking for you. But Jesus said, I'm in my father's house. I was in my father's house. I was in my father's business. Today morning, what business you are in? What business you are in when you are building up the children? We had a wonderful youth meeting yesterday. You know, we did lots of things, playing and eating and enjoying, cutting some grasses and training them. What happens is uh, give them the heaven's perception. In the heaven's perception, there is no religion, but the perception of heaven. There is beauty, joy, and strength there. Over the years, I struggle with so many people, so many religious people. Every day when you wake up in the morning, you have a heaven's perception. The world's perception don't take up your life. Even, see, you may be thinking, Pastor Sam, you must be extraordinary. No, I'm like you, like anybody. I'm like Joanna. I'm like uh, Brother Samuel. When I wake up in the morning, I'm like any one of you here. But I switch. God, I want to have your eyes. And I want to see what you are doing. And when I see the enemy, what he's doing with people's life, I get angry. Naturally, no matter how much you love, this is what the enemy is doing. Help them to wake up their eyes. When Jesus took all his disciples, see, few disciples, and to show them this is the heaven's perception. Don't stay with Moses, what he did uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Don't stay with here, but one day is going to come. There will be a cloud of witnesses going to come, and they are going to rejoicing, and the church should be in a place clothed with the holiness of God, clothed with the Holy Spirit of God, waiting for his return. If Israel had been ready to wait for Messiah to come, they would have seen this is Jesus, he's our Messiah. See, Israel was waiting for poverty to come. All the difficulty, there is no food in Israel. Now only place is severe poverty on all the children of Jacob and all the people were in trouble there. And they said, the only place where there is food is in Egypt. See, you can, you can celebrate Passover. I tell you, the only place there is food is in Egypt. Because Jesus was there in Egypt. Now, they have to travel there. Only when the difficulty came, they were trying to find where Joseph is, where Jesus is. And they all traveled down. Egypt didn't call them, come and build our houses. They didn't say, come and call and build our Egypt and all the pyramid, everything build. They didn't call them. These people, Israeli people, because they didn't see the time and the visiting of the time, now there is food only there in Egypt. They all traveled down to Egypt. That's the way they found Joseph. It's all a scenario coming back again completely. Your difficulty should not lead you, but your understanding, who is this Joseph? Who is this Jesus? Visions, dreams, and purpose in your life, when you see that one, you don't have to go. See, I want to tell you, when, when you know, we read in the book of Ruth, Naomi, she was living in Bethel. In Bethel is a place, a basket of food. But there was a poverty, difficult time. Rather than looking to the Savior, God, it's a difficult time. I'm looking to you. You are the Lord God of Israel. You are the mighty one of Israel. My eyes are fixed on you. I'm not going to run anywhere. But she had in Moab, there is food. 
This is the Israel's mentality. Church, I tell you, I'm preaching this for the church, not for Israel. For you and me, I am preaching. What she had, Naomi thought, there is food in Moab. Moab is not a blessed place. Moab generation is a cursed place. There is, even there is food there, you don't go there for food. Wait in Israel, the basket of bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that flow from the throne room of God, I am going to stay put. Would she Naomi did? No. She went to, she went to the place. She went to Moab, where there is curse, where there is an abomination. She went to the place. She was not prepared to stay in the place where the word of God is. Because you know why? It will give you heaven's perception. This poverty, this difficult time I'm going through is only temporary. The day will pass. Tomorrow will come. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Shall we shout hallelujah? I am tracking down to Moab. I am going to backslide from my life and my calling. What happened? She lost her two son-in-laws. Maclone and Kilion died in Moab. And the two of his daughter-in-law became completely widowed. Church, you need to understand, a heaven's perception, though it is trouble, difficulty, my Redeemer is living. What is waiting in Moab? Moab, what is waiting is, your two sons are gone, and you have two daughter-in-laws. They are completely despairing. Devil will not tell you what is going to happen. If you have a heaven's perception, every trouble, I'm not going to listen to nonsenses. I'm going to stay in the place with heaven's perception. And those who have heaven's perception, I will walk with them. You know, man of God, I, I, for the last 30 years I stood in connection with, because you know why? They see heaven's perception. I had wonderful men of God gone to be with the Lord in heaven. And they led me, they baptized me. And they see me that I was clothed properly. Not with this suit. I didn't have the suit and those things in those days. But they make sure I was clothed. I was clothed. Because when you are clothed, you can see the perception. Heaven's perception properly. For your life, you do not know your identity, who you are, until we are clothed with. Jesus took the disciples to the Mount Transfiguration to show the heaven's perception. What their perception was, this is beautiful. Let us sit here all quietly, nicely. One will for you, one ten for you, one ten for me. We are the three elders here. We can do greater things. Hey. Jesus said, shut up your mouth. Don't tell anyone until I have risen from the dead. You can see, you got the Easter message now. I never read this anywhere in the Bible, anywhere in any books whatsoever, but the Holy Spirit completely air dropped into my spirit. Because Jesus wants to show the heaven's perception, this is what is going to happen. But don't tell anyone until I risen from the dead. Now Jesus is risen from the dead. He said, all authority is given to me. Go and tell everyone. All this all these three or four women went to the cross, went to the, went to the tomb, asked the question, who shall move this stone for me? The stone is so big. Who is going to move the stone? They are talking to one another. Who is going to move the stone? The stone is already moved. No matter what problem you are going through today, what difficulty you are going through, what sickness is you are going through, you may be looking, it is a big stone. It is not a big stone. God has sent forth the angels and moved the stone already for you. And they were afraid. They seen Jesus. The Bible says they were running from the tomb because they seen, they seen the Lord is risen. You know what happened? The Bible says they didn't tell anyone because they, they were so scared. They ran towards the apostles. They were running towards the apostles. They didn't say to anyone that Jesus is risen. You know, today, Jesus is not in the Mount Transfiguration. He's not in the, in the Calvary, Mount of Calvary. He's not in the tomb. I walked into the tomb several times. Actually, in Israel, there's only people queuing up, you know, miles and miles to go into the tomb of Jesus. Jesus is risen. And he's not there. He's not there. 
But the disciples were so scared, they didn't tell anybody Jesus is risen because fear. Today, the message to the church is go and preach the, preach the gospel, make disciples. People don't make disciples, they tell Pastor Sam what he should do. Because that's not what Jesus said, because they were afraid what they are going to think. If I share the gospel with somebody, what they are going to think. I am not scared because I see the perception of heaven. When I stand with strangers, I tell them the gospel. When I stand with other religious people, I preach them the gospel. Because I am not scared, because I am clothed. Church, when you are clothed, see now they have seen Jesus risen. They were running towards the apostle. But they were scared to tell anyone about Jesus is risen. In your walks of life, you read the Bible. They were running from the tomb towards the house where apostle is, religion. But they afraid, the Bible says, they were afraid. They didn't tell anyone that Jesus is risen. But already Jesus is risen. They should have been shouting, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. There is salvation for you, my dear. There is healing for you. Jesus is risen. But the Bible says they were so scared. Today, church may be living in the same place. You don't tell the gospel to anybody. You can preach the good news to anybody. You are waiting to organize something. That is a pure dead religion. But when you are running from the tomb, you will shout, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen today. Salvation. Salvation. Now, apostles didn't even believe. Hallelujah. See, there is, there is something goes on in our hearts the perception of heaven when you get it. In your life, teenagers, youngsters, when you go through sickness, pain, and sorrow, and struggle, you have a perception of heaven. Shall we stand before the living God? I just want to finish in five minutes. Empowered.